what aspect of the leap, and sorry to linger on this, even though you can't quite say details yet, but what aspects of the leap from GPT-4 to GPT-5 are you excited about? I'm excited about being smarter. And I know that sounds like a glib answer, but I think the really special thing happening is that it's not like it gets better in this one area and worse at others. It, it, it's getting like better across the board. That's, I think, super cool. Yeah, there's this magical moment. I mean, you meet certain people, you hang out with people and they, you talk to them. You can't quite put a finger on it, but they kind of get you. <laughs> it's not intelligence really, it's like, it's something else. Uh, and that's probably how I would characterize the the progress of GPT. It's not like, yeah, you can point out, look, it didn't get this or that, but it's just to which degree is there's this intellectual connection between like, you feel like there's an understanding in your crappy formulated prompts that you're doing that it grasps the, the deeper question behind the question that you, yeah, I'm also excited by that. I mean, all of us love being understood, heard and understood. That's for sure. That's a weird feel. Even like with a programming, like when you're programming and you say say something or just the, 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 the completion that GPT might do, it's just such a good feeling when it got you, like what you're thinking about. It's, and I look forward to getting you even better. Uh, on the programming front, looking out into the future, how much programming do you think humans will be doing five, 10 years from now? Uh, I mean, a lot, but I think it'll be in a very different shape. Like, you know, maybe some people program entirely in natural language. Entirely natural language. I mean, no one programs like writing bytecode. I mean, some people, no one programs the punch cards anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you can find someone who does, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of angry comments. No, no. Yeah, there's very few. I've, I've been looking for people who program Fortran. It's hard to find, even Fortran. I, I hear you. But that changes the nature of what the sk the skill set or the predisposition for the kind of people we call programmers. Then changes the skill set. How much it changes the predisposition? I'm I'm not sure. Oh, same kind of puzzle solving, Maybe. all that kind of stuff. You know, the program is hard. It's like how get like that last one percent to to close the gap. How hard is that? Yeah, I think with most other cases, the best practitioners of the craft will use multiple tools, and they'll do some work in natural language, and when they need to go you know, write C for something, they'll do that. Will we uh, see humanoid robots or humanoid robot brains from OpenAI at some point? At some point. How important is embodied AI to you? I think it's like sort of depressing if we have AGI <laughs> and the only way to like get things done in the physical world is like to make a human go do it. Mm -hmm. So I, I really hope that as part of this transition, as this phase change, we also get uh, we also get humanoid robots or some sort of physical world robots. I mean, OpenAI has some history, and quite a bit of history working in robotics. Yeah, but it hasn't quite like done in we're, terms of we're emphasis. We're like a small company. We have to really focus, and also <laughs> robots were hard for yeah. the wrong reason at the time. But like, we will return to robots at, in some way at some point. That sounds both inspiring and menacing. Why? Because immediately we will return to robots. It's uh -huh. kind of like in like in like terminal. We will return to work on developing robots. We will not like turn ourselves into robots. Yeah. Of course. Yeah.